Why, hello there. How's it going? It's been a while. So, any of you want to talk about Crowfall? Crowfall in 2020? Upcoming Siege War MMO that promises in-depth world building? Crafting that actually matters? Player looting? Real risk versus reward gameplay? And... A development cycle that is way too freaking long. Yeah, that Crowfall. Hey, what's up guys? It's Shadiz, I'm back. It's been a long time since I made a piece of content. Ooh-wee! It's been, what, almost a year since I last streamed anything on Twitch? And it's been at least two years since I made my last video on Crowfall. So, uh, yeah, here I am. A little bit, uh, a little rusty, a little bit, uh, weird. Coming back into it. What is my cat doing there? Cozy, what are you doing? Don't steal my rupees. I... He's a little thief, yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, so I was thinking what type of content do I actually want to make? Uh, I had no clue. And then it hit me. What better to do than just start with the game that you've been playing the most on the internet. And that has generated the most viewers and subscribers, which is you guys over the course of the years. So, um, yeah, first video, Crowfall again. I heard some positive things about it, some other not so positive things. I don't know. I've literally haven't looked at anything Crowfall related for the last year and a half at least. So I'm going to step into this and my idea is to kind of give you guys an I uh, like a look of what the actual starting experience is for Crowfall because personally I think that is one of the biggest hurdles that Crowfall has is their actual starting experience. It never has been really that interesting. And with that, I kind of want to try and give you guys a solid idea of if this game is still worth keeping on your radar or not. This video turned out way too long because I wanted to make it like 10, 15 minutes max, but it ended up being almost an hour, I think, a little bit over an hour. So um, I put some timestamps in the, in the description. If you guys want to skip to certain parts that I talk about certain things about, definitely do that at the end of the video i also have a quick rundown of my final thoughts and what i think about the state of the game right now in its beginner experience i'm not gonna go into details and into advanced stuff like sieging and actual pvp and campaign maps that will be for potential later videos but we'll see um so yeah definitely skip to the end of the video if you just are interested in my thoughts about the game that's just fine i wouldn't watch a one hour video either anyways without further ado let's go 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 one two three here we go what is up we are in ready to go um let's see eternal kingdom design and build your own kingdom to serve as a personal house guild city or marketplace for other players so this is basically your own uh your own world builder right then we have God's Reach, starter world for new players, players versus monster only. Uh, learn the basics of combat, crafting and exploration. Then we have the campaign and this is where it's at guys, this is where we want to be. Open world player versus player servers that last for one month. Recommended for experienced players. Huh. Minimum level 15, so we're gonna have to get a character up to level 15 in God's Reach and then we can hop into the campaign. I don't know if that's a smart idea to hop in there the moment you hit level 15, but we'll see about it. Enter. New character. God, it's been a long time. Right. We have a ton of uh, races. What do I want to play, actually? Uh, we have... How many races do we have, actually? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... Well, 12 races. Uh, we have the Centaur, the Elkin, the Fey, the Ganeshan, the Half Elf, the Half Giant, High Elf, Human, Minotaur, Nathari, Stoneborn, and Wood Elf. Good. Oh, 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 oh. the Frostweaver is out. Right. Okay, I've decided what I'm going to play Frostweaver. I haven't played Frostweaver yet. I'm probably going to pick High Elf for that since they are pretty good with her base magic stats. Yeah, Frostweaver it is. Good, let's make a character. Okay, character creation still seems pretty much the same. 
So nothing really changed over here. All right, seems good. Let's go. Doesn't matter. We got our character. Enter. Ooh wee. All right, so we have the Guts Reach and then the Infected. That is the campaign mode, I think. So this new patch just dropped on the live servers. So this is all pretty new, except for the people that could have gone on tests uh, on the test server. Uh, so yeah, enter. Let's go. Let's see how this runs. I hope they've changed a lot because it's been a long time, dudes. It's been a long time since this game has been in development. I think about five to six years now. I started playing it in October 2016, so uh, it's been a while and they are, oh lord, look at that top left corner, we are in alpha, alpha dude, no more pre-alpha, what, we have progression, beautiful, all right, let's see, frame rate still seems to be, um, clunky the graphics have definitely improved though where are we actually this is not where we used to spawn back in the day seems like we're in a temple already okay cool let's get out Ooh, we got some mist going on hmm nice and misty what is that a sun sentinel it's alive oh i can interact with it uh uh i guess not that's that's pretty cool i like how that looks yeah, the graphics and the lighting and everything are definitely improved. There's uh, there's definitely some more ambience in the game now. At first sight. So that's good. Uh, interface looks a lot different too. Oh, lord, I haven't even seen that yet. We have a, a different interface. Uh, we have some action slots, it seems. Alt 1, Alt 2, Alt 3. Wait. Don't we have a... A harvesting tray anymore like back in the day we used to have like two action bars with your combat tray and a harvesting tray so every time you wanted to harvest something you had to switch to that tray but that seems to be gone so i wonder what that means how that would work we'll figure it out soon what is this tree looking very fancy seems like i can interact with this Ooh. Uh oh, I got a buff. Refreshing. Short duration buff. Probably some uh heightened regen or something. Alright. What are these? Frostcasters. Ooh. So these are my weapons as a frostcaster. Some kind of elemental gauntlets. I like that. It's pretty good. I'm just testing some physics and stuff, the way the character moves. Doesn't seem all too different though, but the character does seem to be a little bit more grounded. Like back in the day you would like glitch on edges, but it seems much more responsive now. So that's good. Where do I go though? That's still something I I like don't understand. Like 2020 man, when you introduce people to an MMO, you need to kind of explain what's going on because I have no clue. And I've played this game a lot. I kind of know what I have to do. I have to go out and harvest stuff and, and craft my first materials and my harvesting tools and all that stuff. But there's no direction whatsoever. So for some people that would be interesting. I, I, I definitely understand a lot of people enjoy that. Me personally, I kind of enjoy it. I kind of like being lost in, uh, in, in, in MMOs and stuff. Trying to find your own way. But still. Oh, this is the map. Ooh, the map changed a bit. I don't know if this is better or not. Very little details on it. There's some camps, encampments. Right, I heard about those. So now they've added like NPC camps where you can go and, and farm mobs and, and apparently they drop loot and stuff as well. And this seems to be a little glitchy. So I guess I would have to make my way to one of these camps. That might be a good starting point for me. And uh, along the way, grab up some materials and stuff. All right, let's test this out. All right, feels a lot like the Confessor. Only with ice bolts or frost bolts, whatever you would call it. Uh, harvesting. Harvesting requires tools. No crap. All right. We got our first tutorial screen. All right. So that's good. Um, yeah, feels very much like Confessor so far. Uh, still seems like we're looting every mob 
no auto loot. That's annoying. Like, in the beginning it isn't that annoying, but if we're gonna have to loot every mob and they have to click everything in the in the window, you can't take all. Fix that, guys. I want everything now. Give it. All right, I can't uh, I can't skin this boar yet. Uh, harvesting trees. Uh, left click on a tree. Blah blah blah. Yep. All right. Wait. Uh -huh. Nice. Nice. All right. Harvesting is automatic now. Wow. I'm acting out for something that is so normal in a game, but honest to God, this feels good. So the game actually recognizes when you're in front of a harvesting node and it um, automatically equips your axe and you can start swinging at it. Wow, what a relief. You have no idea. You have no idea. That is good. That is very nice. Yeah, I completely agree with that. All right, talent points. You gain talent points. All right, so it seems like we are getting some uh, tutorial windows. So that's something. Also, something I don't understand is that every time you need to loot something, the whole inventory interface and everything opens up, which is... I don't know if I like that. It's its kind of intrusive, you know? It doesn't feel... doesn't feel streamlined. It, it's like, you gotta go in that window every time, then you gotta click all the different materials to get, and then you can go out of it again. At least it's a lot more responsive. I gotta, I gotta say that, though. Back in the day, it used to lag every time that window popped, so at least that, that, that process is a bit faster. Right, we also got some uh, talent points. Right. So the talent window still looks the same, but again, much more responsive. Yep, nice. All right, so the first talent we can take is a freezing blast. Uh, what does that say? Ooh, that's a lot of text. Uh, good, let's go. Let's just test it. Yep, Freezing Blast. We'll see what it does. And I'm going to put my stat points into Intellect. Just gonna boost my damage a bit. Oh! What is up, my friend? What is up, my friend? Dravwix. Hey, what's up, buddy? Wait, wait, wait. Let me, uh, let me invite you again. Shit! It's been a long time. There we go. That's an old buddy of mine. I just got that first skill, right? Let's, let's test it. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, what? That looks nice. Yeah, that's been a long time, dude. Dravix used to be one of my uh, guild mates, and then... Wait, he used to be in a guild called Geldera. Used to be friends with uh, with them. Then he joined my guild. Then he made his own guild. Then I joined his guild. And now he... Um, seems to be in a different guild again. Kind of recording stuff for YouTube. So I'm a solo for now. Alright, let's gather some more. Oh, seems like you still have the mechanic with the uh, with the critical hits a la Fortnite. I wonder if that has become a bit more responsive as well, because that wasn't working all too well earlier. Whoa, 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 dodge, red elk. Easy now, easy, easy. We gotcha. Good. Goddamn, I'm already annoyed of clicking every loot window. All right, game definitely feels a lot more responsive, and there's actually people playing, man. All right, wait, what is that? What is this? Uh, I just got something? I, I don't know what that is. Was that mine? Uh, let's make our harvesting tools. So we have an axe. Uh, let's make a hammer to get some stone. Okay, that process is still exactly the same. Let's make a, a knife so we can skin some animals. I need some more wood. I wonder how I'm going to edit this video though, because there's going to be a lot of harvesting. I'm gonna try to keep this as exciting as possible. My goal now is to like demonstrate to you guys how it feels to go from uh, the starting levels to the like how to get through the to the starting experience, right? And how that feels, and if that has improved any over the last uh, few years that I haven't played. So far, it's okay. It's it's actually it's actually okay. The world feels more more alive. There's more people playing. I hope that lasts. Um, the only thing I, I'm still seeing as an issue is there is no direction. And for someone completely new, that might be a turnoff. Because there's basically no, like, wh what is the goal actually, right? I think that's still one of Crowfall's biggest struggles, is, is their starting experience. 
uh, I feel like they like they need to push that a bit because otherwise they're gonna have a lot of initial players and a lot of people that are gonna quit the game because it, it does take some while to get into the good parts of the game. So I basically know what's coming and what I can expect. So for me, it's you know it's it's kind of normal going through this again. But yeah, it does feel pretty good, and there's actually some background music. Yeah, see, I still don't like that um that critical hit swing there. It, it doesn't feel responsive enough. That's something that I that I don't like games doing. Uh, like I don't like to see games doing that. Like when they take a concept from another game, which is just fine, right? Games need to take stuff from other games which are good to improve their own game. That's that's a okay. I totally support that. But it always rubs me kind of the wrong way when that system doesn't really feel good, as good or actually better than the system that they uh, that they copied. So just a little uh, opinion there. Just gotta get some more wood. My axe is about to break as well. There we go. Axe is broken. So we craft a new axe. Thank you very much. And then the only thing we are missing is a pickaxe for some ore. Oh, what is this? Wait, is this that, that camp I was... Uh, oh, yeah, we're at the camp. Nice. We made our way to the first camp. And we have some uh, some Ganesian clerics. I actually don't know what my skills do, but I like them. They, they, they look nice. They look fancy. All right, nice. Okay, so I do seem to be generating these uh, these icicles. Uh, I don't know what they do. What do they do? Maybe I should read my skills. Real quick. Uh, where are my skills? Skills. Uh, okay, what is this? Freezing blast sweeps forward, damaging enemies, blah, blah, blah. Okay, just a cone of damage. Um, any of your ice within the effect is converted to frigid ice. Frigid ice. Harms enemies within five meters of the time over time, dazing them and inflicting blah, blah, blah damage. Um, becoming rooted and suffering ice buildup. Tripping it again will afflict uh, with, while the while afflicted with ice buildup causes knockdown. Oh, so I guess I generate these ice pillars, and if I use skills in them, I can manipulate them. Hmm, I like that. I wonder if I'm gonna get a skill where I can just make those at some point. Uh, what's my ultimate? I have two ultimates. Nice. Refrigerate. Refills your ice stores and restores mana. Wait, my ice stores? What are my ice stores? Nice. So I have a heal and I have something that refills my resources. That's good. I have a caravan whistle. Oh, the caravan system is in? Hmm. Do we have caravans in this game now? Nice. All right. That's very interesting. All right. Not going to break my head over that for now. Uh, I guess we're just going to grind some XP, right? Whoa, 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 don't put, don't ram my ass. Okay, I'm, ooh. Okay, oh, so I just triggered one of my ice, icicles. I'm just gonna call them icicles. So if I walk them over it, they should start getting damage. Oh yeah, they sure do. Eat that bitch. Excuse my language. Uh, how's my health looking? Uh, not too shabby. Oh, these guys can hit. Oh, 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 Easy, easy. Walk over my... My death trap. Oh, crap. Okay, okay. Ultimate. Oh, shit. NPCs are actually hitting me. Quite a bit. Interesting. All right. Right, right, right. I can make bandages, right? Bandages, bandages. Where are my bandages at? Uh, basic survivalist? Yes. Let's make some basic bandages. Alright, so... Uh, can I put these bandages somewhere? Uh, how do I even put them down there? Uh, wait a second. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, see, the, the interface isn't... Mm, the interface looks fancier. Looks fancier, gotta give that. The interface definitely looks clean now. I like the way the interface is looking. But it still handles way too clunky, in my opinion. It's 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 not streamlined enough. 
I gotta be honest, guys. I gotta be honest. Good. I guess I found a guild already. Hey, there we go. It's nice to have contacts. One big tip, though, in this game, pro tip, find a guild as soon as possible. Definitely. This game is not a solo game. If you start playing this solo, you will not have the greatest time. You want to have a group of friends to play this with, to help you out with crafting. Because there's a lot of crafting, there's a lot of farming. You want to have a team to, to do that, to get a wit. 100%. Especially once you get into the campaigns where PvP is uh, prominent. Yeah, you want to have uh, you want to have a team to have your back, man. You're attacking me again, man. Response. Boom, boom. Oh! Charge! And you missed, boy. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, level four, nice. Uh, put some more into intellect talents. What's my next talent point? What is this? Ice weave. Oh, this might be the one that I wanted. Uh, where I can make my own icicles. Whoa, oh my god, these tooltips. Uh, oh, nanny. Okay, so basically, you see that resource bar on top of my action bar? Those two uh, blue crystals? Those are my ice stacks. Wait, no! I'm explaining something, you stupid rat! Leave me alone! Wait, I can show you. You see, if I press my new skill, uh, the one skill, I can actually make these uh, icicles, and then I can explode them, or kind of like manipulate them with the uh, number two skill. And there's different types of attacks that make your eyes into different types of ice. Right? Um, this particular one does uh, damage over time. Ooh, I got some gloves. This particular one has uh, has a dot on it. So it does damage over time and it slows my enemies, which are in the vicinity. But there's ones that heal. There's ones that do impact damage. And I think there's one that um, restores... Um, resources for you and your group members and I've looked a little bit more down in the talent tree and apparently there are some uh, talents that increase your uh, your maximum amount of ice that you can carry with you so I kind of like that mechanic I didn't think I would like the Frostweaver all that much at first glance it looks like a confessor but it, uh, it seems like it's gonna play completely different which is nice this seems to be like quite a complex class um, there's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of skill ceiling to go through here. Uh, a big learning curve, I think. Uh, right? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, we're actually getting gear from uh, from NPCs now. Right? Cool. Right, I just got some boots as well. I'll take that. Oh, I actually get a graphic on my boots. Look at that. I have some fancy boots. These boots are wait for walking. And I'm just walk. Right, true? These boots are made for walking. And I'll walk right over... You. That's how it goes, right? I think. Huh. Oh, damn. Ooh. Yeah, get into my shit. Yeah, get slow. No, 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 no. Ooh. Yep. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay, leveling goes quite fast, which is good. Ooh, I got some green boots now. So it seems like they've improved on the things that they already had. Um, But other than the... um. Then the NPC camps, I don't really see a lot of new stuff yet. But we're only just in, so... Crystal Lance. This down grants a crystal la lance power. Skewers an enemy with jagged eyes, blah blah blah. Enemies under 35% health suffer execution damage. Oh, execution skill. I like that. What's that? Frost armor. Creates frost armor. Ooh. Frost armor can be picked up by allies and you and you to add 3,500 armor. It lasts until you zone or until you take damage. Uh-huh. I have two skill points. I'm going to take both, man. I'm just going to go for the attacks. I don't mind if I screw up my builds right now. This is going to be a test character. Anyways, if I decide to play this more in the future, I'll make something decent. Interesting. Ooh. Okay. And so I can pick that up. Oh, yes. Now I have a buff at the right side. Frost armor. Good. All right. So here's the skill tree. And basically what this does is over time, you're going to get automatic skill points. Uh, even if you're offline, you're still going to get these points. They're ticking on a meter. And basically, oh, they reset everything. Okay. So we had a reset, right? I should have expected that. 
So I still have to train my skills. Right. So I can actually do that right now. Um, basically, you're going to have to make a choice, right? You have a primary track and a secondary track. So you have two tracks of skills that you can train. And basically what these are, are like the three main themes of the game, which is combat, crafting and exploration. And each of these are going to give you stat increases. For example, if you go into combat, you're going to get better at fighting. Your stats with fighting increase. You can specify into melee we weapons. You can specify into your armor. Um, and just simply put, uh, this will make you better at combat, right? If you choose crafting, you, same thing there. You select, you specify in a certain craft and your crafting skill becomes better. You get better crafting results. Um, better critical hits on your crafting, all that stuff. You'll also unlock more recipes for that uh, craft, so there's that. And then you have exploration, and exploration is a little bit more vague. Um, it's basically, well, no, it's not vague. It's gathering, basically. It's gathering. Get better at gathering uh, ores or uh, stone, um, digging up graves, wood specialization, uh, skidding. I used to be a, a skinner, uh, which was pretty lucrative. And so basically you're going to have to choose two of these tracks. You can't put like your primary track into combat and a secondary track into combat. You have to go combat crafting, combat exploration, uh, crafting exploration or any combination of those three, right? Um, so basically you're going to have to let go of one. And you would think, okay, I have to go into combat because I need to be able to fight. But there's actually people that just enjoy crafting in this game so much because it's such a big part. And you can actually stand out so much uh, from other people that they go for crafting exploration and they just become craft uh, master craftsmen and uh, gatherers. And because of that, um, there are actually some things, I think, if I'm not mistaken, if you're a really good crafter, um, one of the things uh, which is interesting is you're always going to have access to decent and more than decent gear because you can craft it yourself. You're going to have a lot of resources. And having gear also makes you better at combat, right? Because gear always breaks in this game, or your, your, your stuff can be stolen, whatever. So being a crafter actually also can give you a, com uh, a combative um, um, advantage. Then you get the basic idea of what that looks like, right? So for me personally, um, I'm going to be honest, uh, I'm going to go with combat and exploration for now. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fuck with uh, with crafting. Uh, too complex for now. Uh, I have done a lot of crafting. I also have a second account. I usually make that my crafting account. So we'll just select a basic combat, and then for our secondary track, we will go into uh, exploration. There we go. So a little rundown of that. Probably took way too much time to explain that. I might cut that out of the video. We'll see. Um, but yeah. There we go. That's that. Right, inside of the temple, the frames were pretty bad. But now that we're in the open world, it's actually pretty stable at 60... Okay, I lied. But it feels pretty stable. It doesn't feel like I'm dropping frames at all and I'm on the highest settings at the moment. So that's good. Uh, probably when we get these massive fights, it's gonna it's gonna start lagging again and stuff. The thing I'm really looking forward to is, uh, is 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 game systems, more game systems, man. There needs to be some more beef to the game, because there was some stim some some things lacking. Crafting was still very very troublesome because you don't have um, factories and all that stuff yet, so you can't craft in bulk really. So everything you have to hand craft, which became quite tedious it's fun but it's it's quite tedious to keep doing it over and over and over again while the server keeps resetting oh exploration disciplines okay okay, okay. those are the harvesting disciplines or crafting disciplines right uh, i'm not gonna explain disciplines right now just know that they are again a different type of gearing or or character progression which can enhance your skills and specialize you further into what you want to become uh, and you have three types. You have major disciplines, which usually relate to huge skills, and um, you can change your whole class based on that. Um, exploration is crafting and harvesting, and miners are just minor buffs, passive buffs mostly. So we'll take a minor discipline, because I did get a minor um, discipline here. It's not the best, I guess, Thorn Shields, 
So um, basically, when someone attacks, I get thorns. You all, you guys all know how that works. So I'm just gonna slot that in there. I don't know if I'm screwing myself over and I can remove that easily anymore. But um, yeah, there we go. So you guys know how that works. So now that's in here, and this uh, specific miner actually gives me. An extra skill, which is Thorn Shield. Envelops you with dangerous uh, thorns for 15 seconds, causing any who strike you to take damage. So, nice. Some extra damage output. I'll just put that on here. 15 seconds. So, when you get attacked, pop that one. You pop that baby, and you do some extra damage. What is this? This talent grants the free weaving power. Wait, free weaving? Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? <laughs> Nani! Why is this <laughs> so complex? What is this? Okay. So, Crowfo likes to do this thing with skills where they kind of like combo into different versions of itself. So, if you can see there, you can start with a skill, then it goes into two choices, then it goes into two other choices, and then it goes into another set of choices. This is definitely one of the longest chains I've ever seen, though. Um... Let's see what this does. Um, skip, skip, skip the edit. I'm just going to read it and I'm then going to explain it to you afterwards. Um, so, if I press number four, I should get two options. Right? If I press E, I go into the healing ones and then I can choose... Bam! Uh, the cool one, I think. And this one gives me resources. Regents my, uh, my mana. Uh, this whole area actually... Regents mana for uh, my whole group. Pretty nice. I like that. Just to give you an idea how these... Um... Bam. So you actually create the different eyes. You remember this one? This is the um, damage over time one. So... It's actually pretty nice. This gives you an idea of how combination skills work. Every class has these types of combination skills. Where you have to make choices in between the casts. Which can... Um... Which can be quite difficult when you're in uh, in some intense fighting, but very rewarding if you pull it off. Alright guys, I got back to the starting temple because I wanted to show you guys something real quick. Something that uh, new players might look over uh, at the start because it's not really obvious that you can do this. So there's actually multiple ways for you to gain experience. One is obviously by grinding it out and killing mobs and stuff. Uh, the other one is, and this is where the lore comes in a little bit is to sacrifice items to the gods. So basically, we are like vassals of the gods that are sent to the different worlds that exist in order to scavenge them and to gather materials for them in order to build new worlds with, right? So you have the option to select one of the gods at these god statues and walk up to them at the brazier. Let me show you. And if you interact with them, you get this little pop-up screen. Right now, there aren't uh, any benefits to choosing a different god. There's a whole plethora of them, but I don't think that's implemented yet. But this one is the virgin goddess, Sibel. Ooh. And um, basically what you can do is you can add items into the uh, little window here. And you get experience. As you can see from this uh, mushroom, I get two experience. If I put weapons in there, well, these don't work. Uh, let me see. What can I put in there? Uh, elk tuft, fur tuft. You see, this gives me like 31 uh, experience. I can even drop my money in there and I will get experience from that as well. But I'm going to save that right now. And so, as you can see, you can just drop items in there not everything but most of them and they will give you experience so you kind of have to make a choice as to whether you want to keep your items in order to craft things which I do recommend at the beginning and uh, or sell them for gold or if you want to just sacrifice them to gain XP and level up a little bit faster so that's the way that kind of works and I just wanted to kind of show you that so that's an option um, I think a lot of uh, new players would overlook that at the beginning. So just so you know, that is an option. There you go. All right. And while I was here, I got this stupid idea. It's really stupid. But I am kind of intrigued of going through one of those portals to a zone which has a higher level bracket. And see how I fare. But, um... Like I said, it's stupid. I don't think I'll succeed. 
but I'm gonna do it anyways because it's interesting. Let's go. All right, so we got into the other temple. Pretty much looks the same as the previous one. But as you can see in the top right, Moon Temple 13 to 16. So let's get out there and see if we can kill something. <laughs> Probably not gonna work, but uh, hey, we'll see. Oh, look at that. Seems like we found some NPCs, good. Uh, let's give this a try. I'm, I'm gonna die so bad. Whoop, I'm not gonna think about it. Oh crap, he's level 16. Yeah, that that's not gonna be good. And he's a ranger. Okay, so far so good. I'm taking quite some damage. Let's uh, let's let's make a little armor thingy here. Okay, no, this is bad. This is bad. Ultimate to get some shield. Uh, very bad. Very bad indeed. Very bad indeed. Mistakes have been made, and I should not have come here. I knew this. Come on, come on, come on. Give me at least one kill. No, no, no. Uh, 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 almost got him as well. Yeah, bad mistake. We are going home, people. We are going home. <laughs> well, we tried. Ooh, nice. Oh, we can fly with the crow now. Wait, what? My basic eggs broke. Everything's breaking. No. Oh, nice. We can actually fly with the crow now. That's cool. So when you die, you have to go and fly back to uh, to one of those statues. And then we can uh, retrieve our body. All right. We hauled our asses back to the newbie area where we belong. And we're just going to go out again and finally farm out those uh, levels a little bit. All right. So let's just get into it. I'm going to speed this stuff up and then we can uh, continue. So we have to be at least level 13 in order to go to that other uh, to that other area. So let's just do that. Let's go to one of those other uh, encampments and check that uh, check that stuff out. Those should be our next destination. Destination in sight, sir. Straight ahead. Ooh, what is this? Satyr clerics, level 12. Ooh, that's probably still gonna be a little tough. Uh, let's try them. Whoa, oh, whoa, 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 easy, easy. No, I don't want to die again. I'm inside of my level bracket. I will kill you. Okay, yep, 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 yep. This works just fine. Damn, my, uh, my ultimate regens pretty fast, which is nice. I should probably not be spamming those uh, icicles unless I have stacks of them. That's my my boy. Stay off of it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell is this? Ow. The fluff. You yeah, walk over my ice. There we go. Ultimate. Put one of these down. Explode it. Uh, what is this? Uh, precise tunic uh, cloth. Uh, it gives me health regen out of combat. It gives me dexterity. Not the stats I need for this class, but it's something. Ooh, I got a chess piece now. Look at me being fancy. Use cooking crafting station. All right, a crafting station. Look at that. So we can cook stuff here. Maybe I should roast some meats. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff. Ooh, cookies and stuff now. Gnocchi. Meat grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, Ooh, I could use a grilled cheese sandwich. Grilled cheese sandwich. Wow. Say that five times. Grilled cheese sandwich. Grilled cheese. Never mind. We're just going to stick with um, Ooh, kebab skewers. Oh, great kebab skewers. A quick and rustic meal. Use meat or mushrooms to produce and create. A few sticks of deliciousness. It doesn't show you what it actually does. I, I guess this food starts giving you buffs and stuff as well. But um, we'll just make basic roasted meats for now because that's all we have. I need some animal meat and herb or seasoning. Restores 2.5 of my uh, chicken meter. That's what we call it here, the food meter. Chicken meter. Oh, uh, chicken. Restores a portion of your current food meter. Let's make that. Bam. All right. Woo. 
Ooh, get all that damage on you, and I'm gonna get some damage on me. Oh, crap sticks. Oh, my lord, that's a lot of... That's a lot of people. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm so dead. Wow. Brah! I got owned. Yikes. Uh, join their group? Well, why not? You know what? I'll just join their group. Why not? Maybe we'll level a little bit faster then. Oh, there we go. Bam. That's probably the best way to go about it. I made some friends! Yay! Alright, let's contribute to the group though. The power of, uh, collaboration. Oh yeah, damn. Look at that experience go. Wow. Where are we going, boys? Ooh, that's a lot of them. Let's get them! Let me put some stuff down. Boom! Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, it's a blizzard storm. Nice. Oh, I like that. There we go. Level 14. Now we're picking up the pace. Right and smoothly through the levels. Yeah. Feel like the Power Rangers, man. Unity! Teamwork! Yeah! Explosions! Yeah, that actually doesn't do that much damage. Okay, never mind. Nice, I'm glad I found a group, man. Ooh, let's gather these guys up. Come here, boys. There we go, level 15, sweet milestone. So now we can actually enter the campaigns, but probably not the best idea. So this would probably call for me to go to the next zone, right? Yeah, I'm going to leave this group. It has been a nice run, guys. All right, guys, we had our little adventure with our group and stuff. We managed to get to level 15, and then I noticed that we didn't get that much experience anymore. So I left the group. That was fun, but I got back to the temple now, and um, I went to the sacrificial fire, and I sacrificed all those, um, whatchamacallit, sacrifice items I got from the mobs, and I managed to get myself to level 16. I'm going to go to a higher bracket area soon but first let's check out what we have here vendor wise because we do have some money uh, not a lot but maybe we can buy some things that can help us out so uh, let's see let's check things out um, I think those um, those vendors with the golden crows on them are player made vendors if I am not mistaken you actually have a, an option to um, to place down your own vendors and sell materials and stuff to other players, which is pretty nice. This is where the whole uh, economy and crafting value comes in, right? So in this game, you can definitely distinguish yourself as a as a as a master crafter, which is nice. A lot of people are looking for that kind of stuff. So this game definitely provides that. So let's check things out, right? Uh, I think this guy is a yep a minor discipline vendor. Ooh, pricey though, seven hundred and fifty. Okay, I'm gonna have to spend my gold wisely. Let's just browse and let's just uh, window shop for a little bit. So yeah, I think these are player-made uh, shops, so I'm not gonna go over all of them. Uh, whoa, uh, invisible wall much? <laughs> what the hell is this? Uh, let me through! Oh, wow, okay. Uh, Alright, I'll, I'll take it. Alright, let's let's go check out the mount vendor. Maybe I can buy a mount. Uh, 1,200. I don't have the money yet. Maybe I should save up for a pig saddle. Uh, what do we have here? Ranged mystery weapon. Purchase a random quality novice hammer or sickle. So for 150 gold, I can get a random weapon. So if I buy this, I either get a, uh, a pistol, which I can't use, or I get a new weapon for my claws. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if they're going to keep that in here. Uh, I kind of want to test this. Uh, but we're browsing. Should I? Should I? I should I? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's see, uh, okay, that's a pistol, okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> here goes my money, okay, nice, I got one, all right, 150 gold, uh, 300 gold spent, and that is an upgrade, a little one, but it's an upgrade, 
It's a green quality one, gives me armor penetration, attack power, and ice damage bonus. Yeah, okay. Let's buy until we have two of them. And there goes some more of my money. Yeah, crap. Just give it. Oh, no, 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 not all my. Oh, shit. Oh. I wasted all my money. Ah. Uh. Why? Why? Why did I do that? Ah, uh, that was bad. All right. Anyways, I got a new weapon. Great, and I can't, <laughs> I can't buy shit anymore. <laughs> so far, our shopping adventures, people. So I think the best uh, course of action right now is to go to the uh, level 17 to 20 bracket here and level up my character a little bit further. I think I'm gonna level it as far as I can inside of this uh, God's Reach mode before I enter into a campaign and then. The next video, we're gonna do some campaign stuff. Ooh, okay, so this temple definitely looks different. Yeah. Do you guys wanna be my friends? Do you guys wanna party? Yay, good. People partying. Having a good social standing in this game is gonna be very important as well, because, like I said before, people can kill you, you can kill other players, you can loot them if they're not of your faction. Um... And even in some instances, you can you can screw your your faction members over as well if you like steal their uh, steal their kill spots and all that stuff. So having a good social standing with people is definitely going to improve your uh, your possibilities in the game. If you uh, if people like you, you're going to be able to get things done from them. Uh, they're going to assist you, which uh, works both ways, right? So it kind of depends. You can either <laughs> you can either be an enemy of the state. Or you can, you can be a law-abiding citizen. It's all up to you. For now, though, let's uh, let's let's be the good guy and try to get some levels here. Hey, there we go, level 17. I think I want to play this class as as kind of like a support class. I think that's gonna be nice, giving people resource regen and some healing and stuff. I can change it into explosions. Nice. Okay. Level 19. Look at us go now. Okay, so once you get the hang of it, leveling definitely goes fast. I, uh, I, I definitely see how you can get level 30 in like under two hours. If you start with a group from the get-go, you can definitely skip some, uh, some stuff. Get those early levels really fast. And then just train to uh, to level 30. So you actually have the option to just make a lot of different alts and have different classes to play with. Which is nice, right? Um, the only thing that's going to be more like statistics, static in what you want to do is the way you um, decide how to spend your skill points and your training points. Because uh, that is like account bound. And boom! Through the power of editing, we have become level 30 people. Beautiful, beautiful. I didn't want to show anything else because the rest of the process was pretty much the same. Gameplay and leveling, um, not that much else to show. But let's get into my final thoughts of, um, of my experience so far, right? Uh, let's get into the positives, the negatives. But before we start that, I do want to give a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, everything that I'm going to say whether it's positive or negative, are all in light of trying to make this game um, reach its potential, which I basically still see after um, quitting the game before and, 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 re and revisiting it now, I still see the same potential that this game has. Even though I didn't even get into the campaigns and stuff, I still had a relatively good time in it. So, um, yeah, I, I know the developers personally, I've went to Gamescom twice now to help them out in their, uh, at their boot as a, a volunteer. And I've talked a lot with them about Crowfall and I can tell you for sure their mindset is in the right place, their uh, motivation and dedication are in the right place and they actually do listen to their player base and do change things if we say that some things are just not working out and stuff. Partially also a reason why the development is taking such a long time, I would guess, still not an excuse 
for it to take that long though but we'll get into that later down the line uh, i'm also gonna go over these uh, positives and negatives quite fast i'm not gonna go in too much depth now uh, because this video is already way too long but uh, i do plan on certain points in this um in, in this list to uh, to maybe make a make a video dedicated to that because there are some certain things that I want to talk about in here which I think deserve more attention than just me saying that after uh, an hour long of me uh, making this video so um, yeah let's get into it I uh, wrote something down so I don't forget what I want to talk about like a like a true reviewer mm, beautiful all right let's get into the positives uh, let's start on a high note uh, first point, the world feels more alive and more, um, there's some more ambience going on. You can definitely see the graphics have improved, there's some more lighting effects and all that stuff. Um, they've uh, crafted a little town here, which is pretty nice with some vendors and stuff inside of the houses. Minor things, but it does give a little bit more of a, of a feel of a living world. So that's a, a good step in the right direction. Um, can definitely still improve, but right? Nothing more has to be said about that. Now, point number two, which is for me personally a big one. For some people, it might sound stupid or like logical that that is uh, in inside of a video game, but no more harvesting tray. You see, at the um, your action bar, you only have the one bar. Before that, used to be two bars, which you had to manually switch between. So every time you wanted to harvest something out in the world, you had to press a freaking button. Then you had to press another button. To get that harvesting tool equipped and then you could start harvesting your stuff that is now gone the game recognizes automatically that you're in front of a harvesting node and you can immediately start swinging at it beautiful just beautiful um like i said it's just less tedious it's uh i like it i like it i agree all right point number three the UI and the gameplay feel a lot more responsive. Like I said, characters are a little bit more grounded. I feel like the NPC AI has improved quite a bit. Um, they also have different skills that they use now. And they kind of feel like they adjust a little bit to you. But there are still some things. Sometimes you notice some glitches and, and you feel that they can't really catch up with what you're doing all the time. But it's definitely improved. The UI as well. Uh, no more lagginess every time I open the UI and all that stuff. That's good. We'll talk about the UI a little bit more in the negative parts as well. Because there's definitely some, uh, some, some crap going on there. But it looks nice. I like the way the UI looks. It's uh, way more responsive. And um, so, yeah, that's that. Let's not waste more time on that. And then uh, number four, point number four, um, quite important uh, and kind of a, a little bit in a step of direction to giving people a, a slightly better starting experience than what they had before. And that is you kind of have a little bit more of a gear progression going on now that you can go to NPC camps and basically get gear dropped, you get your minor disciplines dropped, you get some weapons dropped, uh, which make it so that whenever you start a new MMO, what is your first impulse? Obviously, you find some mobs and you go kill them and you start leveling up. So now you can actually do that and get some rewards for it. Before, that wouldn't really be the case and you would start killing mobs, but then you would be like, why the hell am I even doing that? There is absolutely no direction. There's no reason for me to do that. So, um, yeah, there's a slight sense of progression. I don't know how far they'll take that with gear drops. Obviously, the game is still going to be crafting mainly, um, which it should be. That uh, should always be the main uh, way for you to get the best gear in the game. But it is nice that you can just do some mindless grinding and you get some gear out of it. Uh, always nice to have, especially because gear always breaks in this game, right? And uh, there's some player vendors now. Those were in already when I started playing. Those were just implemented, I think. But um, uh, it's a nice touch. I like it. Um, start kickstarts the economy a little bit. Gives people a, a, a way to, uh, to to get some money and to do some business with each other. So that's good. So overall, on the positive notes, I did kind of enjoy my leveling experience. Uh, leveling isn't too fast. It goes. Uh, it isn't too slow. It goes quite fast, especially when you start doing it with a group. That's where the money's at. And uh, yeah, 
So I, I did enjoy it, but uh, I gotta admit, I try not to be biased at all, but I feel like I kind of am naturally a little bit biased because I've been playing this game for so many years and I know what's at the other side of the rainbow through the through the grindiness and the purposeless feeling and stuff. The game really becomes, becomes fun once you start getting into your guild and once you start going into the, like, those campaigns and get that group synergy going with the people that you're playing with. Let's get into the negative points now first point that i want to talk about is uh, a, a really big one and i think this is a, a critical hurdle for for, for crowfall to get over uh, and that is the sense of purposelessness uh, of the beginning of the game there is just no direction whatsoever you start the game and no explanation no nothing and that is an issue i get that you want to get more to that like that that old school type of mmo feeling where you have to figure things out and all that stuff and that is a-okay you got to try and preserve that but in 2020 i'm sorry to say but people do not have the attention span anymore to figure things out for days and days on end this game is already so complex in its score with, with with like crafting and all that stuff there's there's a lot of things you have to do in order to get something done in this game you have to communicate with people if you want to craft a piece of armor for example a plate armor piece you're gonna have to need uh, a letter worker a skinner first and foremost to get the letters because you need some letter filling for your armor for example then you have to get a letter worker that can actually process those kinds of skins for you and it's usually a specific uh, guy that has specifically trained in the type of things that you want to craft then you can take those and then you go go through whole it's a whole process right so having that little guidance at the beginning of the game for people is definitely not a bad thing and wouldn't hurt the game at all and, and as a matter of fact it would probably save the game from um, what I think is a potential killer. I think this is one of the biggest issues that Crowfall has and they really need to start looking at it. It will turn away new players really fast. Like I said, people don't have the attention span anymore. There is just so many games coming out nowadays that you can't expect people to put that much effort in it before they start getting something out of it. It just doesn't work that way. It's not the way the business works at the moment. Um, it's always going to be a niche game though, I understand that, and it should be that, if they want to just stay a niche game, go for it 100%, I'm 100% on board with niche games, I think they have their place, and I think they often are better than AAA games and the mainstream games, um, I love myself some indie games and, uh, and, and all that stuff, so definitely on board with that, but still, you do need that initial guidance a bit. Now, something that I've seen that might help in that direction, I can't go into it too much now, so so take me with a grain of salt. I also can't talk about it too much because I haven't really, there's nothing in it yet, it's not functional, but there is a quest log. And before you go off your rocker, those people that have been playing Crowfall for a long time, I'm not saying that we should go to a theme park MMO with a bunch of quests that overload your game, right? I'm not saying that. But having some quests in the game to give that initial guidance to people could be a really positive thing and it could even help with like end, end level gameplay as well and another thing and this is why i'm probably i'm thinking of maybe making a, a video on its own on this is this is something i've been waiting um, thinking about for years already and which would be a perfect fit for this game is player created quests right let that sink in you have a game that has a solid world builder or is, is, is shaping up to be one and you have something that a system that lets people create their own quests imagine going into one of those player created worlds you walk into their tavern you see a billboard hanging there with player driven quests and people ask for a set amount of materials and if you donate that to the to the quest uh, giver or the quest board there you get a reward for that that would be the one thing i think that would set this game apart it would be mind-blowing i don't think any other mmo has this type of system so that would set it apart right now i'll get into that later uh don't want to get into that too much so yeah that might be a good thing quest log but uh, we'll see. 
Now the next uh, negative part, where's my piece of paper here? is the ui is way too intrusive now we're going back to the ui it's way too intrusive i it looks nice but what the hell is why is it taking up the whole this whole part of my screen first and foremost when i open my inventory and every time i open my inventory i don't need to see my character stats i i don't need this all the time i i've never understood why this is like one unit and especially when you go out and you have to loot, it's bad enough that you can't auto loot yet. It's bad enough. But every time I open a loot window, this whole thing jumps open. I don't need that. That's way too intrusive. That just completely breaks my immersion kind of. And it's just it just handles very clunky. And there's another thing. And I think this is like a, a memory cache problem or something. The game doesn't want to get rid of. But whenever I open a lot of windows, right? Uh, here we go. I open my talents and my spell book. My, my window is completely filled. Can't do anything anymore. But if I ex exit out of that and now I run around in the world and I loot something and my inventory opens up, everything opens up again. Why doesn't it just close for me to open it afterwards again? I have to go click, 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 and then I can go out. Sometimes that just screws you over, especially when you're in a PvP fight and you accidentally press on your inventory space, BAM! Your whole screen is gone. It's... it's... no good. Fix it. <laughs> Not a critical issue, but an annoying one at least. And then the third one that um, is a little bit negative for me, but I can't really talk about it too much because I haven't been able to test it too much, is aiming in this game especially when you play um range classes aiming still feels a little bit off it feels a little bit inaccurate um it's uh, it's it's pretty annoying to get some uh, some area of effect skills off and stuff because sometimes you, you just can't aim it decently um with uh with placing down those ices as well yeah now it actually works because i'm on a higher ground here but it sometimes it it's really annoying and you just you just easily misplace stuff now for some people that is just oh, just be better at the game yeah. and i get that but still aiming in the theoretical and stuff it's, it, there's something that feels off but i can't put my finger on it so i don't want to go into details of it in it anymore if anyone knows what it is um do let me know in the comments below uh, I, i'm i'm very curious but it feels off now if anything i said was uh not correct or you think is not correct also just feel free to put that in the comments i'd love to have a discussion about this and uh yeah that's kind of it that's my video those are my final thoughts i uh i'm definitely still enjoying crowfall i still see the huge potential in the game and i hope that this game does become what it wants to envision uh, i'm still on that uh, on that track now like i said i don't know how long i'll be playing crowfall i'll I most likely won't be going as hard into the game as I used to be, but uh, I'm definitely gonna make some more videos about this. Um, I'm planning on making. A, I'm get, planning on getting into the campaigns and um, uh, get you guys some footage of that and, and some of my opinions about that and all that stuff. And then we'll see how far it goes, right? If you guys got any value out of this video, I know it was a long one, but uh, if you did, uh, definitely consider subscribing uh, to the channel and uh you can support me that way hit the notification bell if you want to get annoyed by me every time i upload something that is fine as well <laughs> um also right now i'm not planning on streaming but i plan on streaming probably again next month uh to start that stuff up again so uh i'll put my my channel my twitch channel link in the description below if you want you can always already follow me um that would be appreciated and that's all I got to say, I think. I think I'm going to peace out here. Guys, thank you for watching. If you've actually watched through this whole video, amazing. I salute you. You're a real trooper. And guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.